Okay, Google. Uh, let's greet everyone in the hall. Hello there. So good to talk to you. Okay. So. Oops. Sorry. Google decides to greet us with the music. Okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Bond, James Bond. Really? But, just kidding. What's in the name? That's what William Shakespeare said in Romeo and Juliet. Uh, so he was not referring to names as such. So what were the names? Names were just the tags that were used as convention to describe something. Uh, people started referring to things with certain random terms and those random terms then became conventions that we carried today and we started referring to them as names of the things, people, objects and everything. But seriously, that question, what's in the name, that stuck me. And I thought, let's explore if this question from the real world is still valid in the virtual world of the virtual bots and AI assistants. But what are they? Aren't they same? Don't bots, assistants, uh, our uh, generative uh, AI, aren't they same? Let's try to figure out if they are actually different or they are sides of same coin. So basically, bots and assistants differ from each other with their design and purpose. Uh, bots come with more of specific offerings and uh, they try to handle requests that, uh, that are restricted to a particular domain. Whereas your virtual assistants, they go everywhere. They spread across domains, they handle multiple things at a time, but then both of them, they increase the delivery of the assistant that they get to you. They help you as a, as a second person who would have actually helped uh, in a virtual space and overall ease your life to a greater extent, making the overall cognitive load go down. Let's try to go much more in detail on the differences between bots and assistants basis their applications. So the bots are usually used for 24-7 uh, assistance, uh, for consumer uh, engagements, uh, to increase lead generations. Uh, they are used to provide recommendations. And then they are available within a system. So they are part of your websites. You uh, log on to a website, and a bot jumps in from the bottom. Uh, you open a mobile app, and the bot gets in. So they are restricted to a system. But what about the virtual assistants? So they can be omnipresent across the system. They can be there in your car. They can be there in your smart home devices. And they can handle multiple things together. They can work with third-party apps. Uh, they can book an Uber for you. They can order your food from Swiggy. Bots don't do that. They are far more restrictive. Uh, your assistants, as we all know, are the likes of Siri, Alexa, Google One, Bixby for Samsung. And then bots are restricted to your uh, Ava or Erika or uh, even a chat GPT is the next generation of the bots. So as I was talking about uh, uh, before, let's see the, what the specific usage is. Uh, when you are within a system, you open the system, you, get, you are greeted by the bot. The bot says, hey, why don't you tell me what's your problem and I'll solve it for you. And then you start with entering your problem, either through chat or through a, uh, through a voice. Uh, but when you're on a virtual assistant, you need to awaken them. They're there in the, in, the, in the system, they're there in the room, they're there in the ecosystem. But they're in a sleeping mode. You need to make them awake by saying, okay, Google, then the Google gets awakened and it listens to you. Uh, so for this purpose, uh, you, you need a term to address the virtual assistant. But when you're on the bot side, the bot is the one who is going to uh, start the conversation with you. So in the last year, we have the rise of ChatGPT as it has become the largest growing software product across the globe. Uh, Google's and uh, Baidu and uh, 
Microsoft, they were not going to stay back. They also got their own versions of know-it-all bots. Uh, there are also other platforms which have decided to use the chat GPT's AI board and get their special purpose bots. So like chat spot is primarily used for events to have communication within the parties, sharing of information only for an event uh, through chat. Uh, we have Doc GPT that lets you upload a document and then you can chat to have more detailed uh, information about anything that's within the document, just to understand that uh, particular document. And then we have some completely unheard of application. Like just last week, uh, we had something called Chew CPT that was launched by uh, Excel Entertainment as the movie Fukre 3 was about to release. So the that particular bot would give you answers as if you are interacting with Chucha and the character is responding to you. So these generative AI bots are going to be there and go forward. Uh, now let's have a brief look at the assistants. Uh, we are Googles and Siri's and Bixby's and Alexa. What all they are doing? They're helping you. They're managing your calls, they're managing your communication, they're ordering food for you, they're ordering uh, your groceries, they're entertaining you, they're entertaining your kids. And they, they have managed a large part of our life and made it extremely convenient for us. Uh, they can be find them, they can be anywhere. In this whole uh, room, we might have so many virtual assistants sitting on each other's phones, smart devices, etc. Uh, you can have them in partnered uh, uh, communications. You can have them inside your headphones. Your cars have them, your TVs have them. They're everywhere. So let's have a look at various bots across the globe. And since I come from banking industry, let's start with banking and see how their names change, how people have started naming their bots. So starting with North America, uh, we see two main trades going inside North America. One is the identity, the brand identity, and second is the impact that uh, the, sorry, just a second. Okay, that the bot is trying to create. For example, if you see Bank of America's bot, uh, it's called Erica. Now, Erica borrows Erica from the word America and forms it, uh, its identity around the brand name. Uh, you have TD Bank, uh, which has a bot named Clary. Now, Clary is a short form of clarity that they want to show in the system, and the bot is set to give you clarity about their system. Now, Ali Bank combines both the words. Ali has Ali from its name, and it's assisting the user, so assist. So the name comes as Ali Assist. Capital One, on the other hand, uses part of its name and rearranges it as an anagram to get you Eno. Uh, Royal Bank of Canada has no me, uh, which is essentially uh, termed as no me, uh, a common term to use, but the, it, it's trying to say no me. And then Wells Fargo settles for a part of its name, Fargo, as the name of its bot. Uh, when we come to India, we have the same trade in continuing, but there is one more thing that gets added, and that's acronyms. So HDFC Bank has Electronic Virtual Assistant, which is your EVA. Uh, SBI has SBI's uh, Interactive Assistant, or code name SIA. Uh, then Kotak Bank uses the same analogy, but then takes the pronunciation out of it and names it KIA. Uh, ICICI Bank takes the I from their brand name and gets the friendliness together to give us IPAL. And uh, Access Bank, takes the name Access, and uh, an emotion of, uh, uh, of, of uh, freedom and uh, pleasure to combine it to Access AHA. Andhra Bank takes A and B from the name and says hi to us with a B. When we go global, uh, almost we have the same trend continuing, and we have an addition of popular regional names getting in. So Commonwealth Bank from Australia continues the acronym trend with SEBA. Uh, but then ELA Bank from Middle East gives us Fatima. 
Now, Fatima is the most common name for Middle Eastern region. In Europe, what we see is the gender equality and uh, the neutral gender, they also get in. And then bots pro uh, provided by bank include multiple gender. So uh, for ING Bank, they have three bots. One is Inga, one is Mari, and one is Bill. Uh, the SE Bank from Sweden has Aida and Amelia. Again, these are popular names from those regions, but then you also get an option to pick a gender you want to converse with. Uh, now, same trend is there in Hong Kong uh, with HSBC giving us uh, Andrew and Amy, and then Hansen Bank in China gets Haro and Dori. Now, what's the difference between these bots, which are of different gender? Technically speaking, nothing. The backend engine is the same, but the front end gives you an additional uh, uh, window to treat uh, whatever gender you prefer uh, to have a conversation with that gender. Uh, if you move to some key banks, they decide not to go with any name. They just use their brand name, like Santander, Barclays, Lloyds. They just have their name going in as name of their bot. They, ha they don't have any persona around it. They don't have any character. It's just the name. Now, outside banking, there are some strange trends. So these trends continue, but then the logics change. For example, the Brussels airport uses the three-digit airport code BRU, and the, the pronunciation of the name Brussels combines together to get us Bruce. Now, Victoria's Secrets, since it's a brand for ladies, they, it combines the color of feminism, pink, with their brand name initials and gives us VS Pink. And then Aloft Hotels, uh, they use the term butler, which is very common with their business, and convert a bot to a bottler. So what should you consider when you're naming an assistant? What is the purpose of the assistant? Who are you going to cater it for? What the target audience is looking for? Do you need a personality when you're trying to give something? Uh, when you consider all these things, then you can decide what should be the overall persona that your assistant needs to provide to your end customers. What about gender? What gender should be the bot? Now, Amy, Debbie, Inga, Mia, Cora, now these are not random names. Uh, 10 banks out of five, uh, by the largest size of uh, assets in Europe, uh, in a study by Forbes, show that they have bots which either have a female persona or a female, female voice. Now, that trend is very common to human because we start getting a female voice acquaintance when we are inside the, our mother's womb as a fetus. It gives us soothing and calming feel and makes us understand the things easily. Uh, female voice has also been considered as a good articulator for vowel sounds. And that's why studies have shown that in workplace, it's better to articulate female voice than a male voice. So pardon me that this study was conducted only at the workplace. So if you say that we are not able to articulate what our spouse are saying at home, that's not included in the study. Uh, female voice gets easier to understand when it is at a higher pitch. And particularly, that's why it was also used in Second World War to give instructions to pilots who were flying the fly fighter jets. There are innumerable of studies that show uh, that female voice is usually preferred across the uh, Americas. But then the social commentators come in and then they say, shouldn't we go for a, for a gender neutral voice? Shouldn't we go for uh, something that gives user a choice to select from? Uh, so again, there are studies which show it's sympathetic nature of the, of the female voice is what is preferred by the, by the users. Now, apart from just the voice quality, it's also required to know that the overall experience, how the product strategy is, what is the brand perception for the user, 
these things are also extremely important and they need to get uh, reflected in the bot. But in the first place, do we really want to converse with a bot? Or do, they just, do our users just want their problems solved? So now, Alexa, Siri, Google, they are all in a particular ecosystem and people are extremely okay to have a conversation with, uh, with these uh, uh, virtual assistants. But bots are on a, p a particular website. They are on a page. You didn't, don't need to announce your arrival on these pages to say that, hey, Bank of America, I'm here. Now talk to me. They already know that you're there and they ask you what your problem is. So having a chat interface or having a voice interface is actually a good thing from a user's perspective, but it should not get annoying. I remember here the Microsoft Clippy, which was there in 97 to somewhere around early 2000s as part of Microsoft Office. It was a cute little U-clip that used to appear on our screens and help us with, show us some gestures and all. But people don't want things to be cute. They want them to be helpful and easy to use. The moment it starts get annoying, it needs to go off. So when we are getting into our bot configuration, we need to make sure that it helps our users and lets them do what they actually want to do. Now, people like to name their positions. Several people name their cars. People name their mobile phones, their knickknacks. As, and this is because as humans, uh, we, we like to assert the control over the tools by naming them. When you say, hey, Google, do it for me, whosoever you might be in your life, you are putting that control on Google and getting a job done from the Google. And that gives you pleasure. And when the job is done, it gives you an additional pleasure. So what can we expect in the future? Uh, we have started seeing this trend going with the generative bots that the personalization has started getting in. They would learn about you and then they would cater to you as per your specific requirement. The other thing that, that will get is the SME bots. You might expect uh, a banking details and then your Alexa would take your bank's uh, virtual assistant for additional help and then the SME assistant would help you. Your Siri might involve the IKEA assistant who would help you in fixing your wall unit. So we can see these things in the future, but then to reach that level, what we need to do is go step by step, start with bots, convert them to, uh, to the IVR vocal bots, and then expect them to learn things so that they can be converted into virtual assistants that can help user. Now, when you're planning this strategy, do think from all perspectives while you are naming your bot or virtual assistants. Thank you.